Well, hey, guess what? It is that time of the month again. It is time for another giveaway. Uh, shortly, we'll run inside and we'll see who the winners are for the month of October, which was the boys' axe and the draw knife. But uh, for the month of November, we decided that we're going to give away a two burner Coleman stove. Now, the little butane tank doesn't come with it, but um, you know, this is a really nice stove. So far, you know, I kind of had to make a makeshift kitchen in the cabin uh, until I can actually get, you know, the kitchen put together. So I treated myself to this little butane camp stove, actually, and uh, it's really working good. That little butane tank, now what I've been doing is I've been making soup, I've been making tea, coffee, uh, sometimes I'll warm up a can of ravioli if I'm, you know, been working late and I haven't really made anything, but uh, this is really nice to have. So it's working out great in there, and we thought, you know what, um, it's camping season. Uh, somebody really might like to have something like this. So this is what we're going to give away for the month of November on the Outpost channel. On the Review channel, we're going to give away, you've probably seen me wearing this, nice leather apron. It's got several pockets in it, and you know, it's really nice to have. It's not as heavy as having a tool belt, so if you're doing something, you know, that's kind of um, light, you know, uh, a small project or something like that, this is really nice to have, especially if you're working overhead. You can carry, you know, screws and things like that. Um, if you have, like, you probably watched me climbing up, working on the drywall, I would just fill my pocket up with screws, and I would have at it. So this is what we're going to give away for the review channel for the month of November. So if you're new here, please go to our website, SmokyMountainOutpost.com. You can check out all the details on the giveaways. We do this uh, once a month on both channels uh, it, for appreciation, basically, for you guys sharing our channel with your family, friends, and neighbors. This is the way that we can say thank you. Also, we've started a new tier system, so be sure and go check that out uh, as well because uh, we're doing, you know, milestone giveaways. We are going to go into the cabin and see who the lucky winners are for the month of October. Okay guys, I had to wait a pretty good while, but I think I finally got enough internet service pulled up. You know, it depends on how the wind's blowing up here to be able to choose the winners. So we're going to turn around here. I've got both videos pulled up for the Outpost Channel and Review Channel. We're going to see who the winners are. Okay, this is the Outpost channel, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this URL. We're going to go over here to the Random Picker. Slide down here, we're going to paste this URL in here. And we're going to go down, we're going to get the comments. Then we will go down and we will start the raffle. So it looks like CC Rider, you are the winner for the Outpost Channel, the nice uh, boys axe. So now we will go over to the review channel. We will copy this URL. Go to the random picker. We will erase that. We will paste that URL in there. We'll get all the comments. Okay, there's the comments. And we will start the raffle. So, Tim Haley, you are the winner for the review channel and the nice draw knife. So, congratulations, CC Ryder and Tim Haley for winning those two prizes. Please contact us at our Gmail, SmokyMountainOutpost at gmail.com. Give us your information on how we can get in touch with you and we will get that out as soon as possible. So again, congratulations to the both of you and let's get back to the video. Well, hey everyone, welcome back to the cabin and another episode of the Review Channel. As you can see, I've got the back of my truck I loaded down pretty good with brick. Um, the people across from my daughter's house are actually moving and 
they called or actually texted my daughter and asked her if I wanted some brick because they kind of had an idea of what I was doing that here. Although I don't know what I will use it for, but there was no point in them leaving and throwing it away. So I went over there, I picked it up. It's basically brand new from the house that was built over there. Uh, so I thought, you know, it would be good for something uh, at some point in time. So I'm going to have to find a spot to unload it. I mean, just accumulating stuff. But, you know, uh, the Lord's good. And, uh, you know, those will come in handy at some point for something in the future. So uh, he is providing currently for the needs that we have up here at the homestead. And um, I decided to go ahead and bring those out here and find a spot to put them. And uh, so anyway, kind of got my work cut out for me for the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, if, like I said, I can find a spot. So but anyway, let me show you what else I got. So this right here is basically a, <laughs> it's a broken down windmill. But what I'm going to do is I'll take some time, uh, not any time in the near future, but I'll set it aside and that'll be a good little project to work on, sand it all off, repaint it, and find a spot to uh, stick it here. Just makes it more uh, homey, you know. Um, so I'm sure that I'll be able to find a spot for it uh, somewhere. But yeah, I didn't see the need in passing that up um, because, you know, I think online these are about, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars. Um, but a little bit of paint and rebending all that stuff and getting it mounted back up there it's not going to be that much and it'll be fun a fun project to do and then I'll have basically a $200 item that I can set around here and make it more of a homestead anyway that was the other item that I picked up well I hope you guys enjoyed the video on me making these steps permanent um, like I had said in that video my son was uh, getting ready to leave and fly out uh, that evening and we just basically had a ladder set up here to get up and down on the porch because we had it complete I said why don't we run to town and get us some stringers and some uh, lumber and at least get me a set of steps uh, where I can get up and down so our choices was four or five or six foot stringers the six was too much the four wasn't enough and the five was almost enough um, so I told him, I said, we're just going to screw it to the porch where I can get up and down, you know, that extra little two and a half inches, it wasn't a big deal, but, um, it did give me a way to get up and down the porch. And then, um, <clears throat> I told him, I said, when I get a chance, I'll find some material that I can actually mill up and make these permanent. So when I had went down to the field that morning taking the dogs you know for a walk like I do every morning um, I spotted that big huge tree down there and the only way to tell if it was good I took another stick and I hammered on it it kind of sounded solid uh, but the only way to really tell is to cut into it so I decided to go ahead and remove it because the top was broken out anyway and lo and behold um, it was good so not only do I have uh, this 24 inch base now that makes these steps permanent makes it level with the top of the deck but I've also I'm hoping that there's enough material that I can make my kitchen countertop out of that so we'll just have to see there's still another piece down there I did cut the, the butt you know the biggest end I took eight foot of it uh, but we'll have to see if there's enough down there to do the kitchen countertops that would really be nice but um, anyway yeah, I'm glad that I've got that uh, permanent now, and I'll probably uh, treat this with oil at some point. Um, not really sure what I'm going to do with the deck yet, because I know if I do it with oil, the dog's little paw prints will be all over it. Um, if I clear coat it, it may not. I'm not really sure, um, but we'll just have to wait and see. Of course, I'm going to have to wait for it to... To dry up because when it does rain walking up and down these this end right here stays a little bit wet so it has to be dry in order to do that so we'll just have to see what the weather allows um, in the near future but uh, 
anyway I know that I mentioned something on the video about uh, some new plans that we've got so let me take the camera down here and I'll try to further explain um, what our plans are uh, in the future well so this area behind the sawmill it's not too steep because I'm kind of on the crest of this hill it's not big enough to call a mountain but on the crest of this hill um, which is probably just I'm standing probably just left of the center of the cabin um, but what we're going to do is there are some white pines um, that I'll try and show you here in a minute that are probably 75 feet back and there's several of them in a row going across with the exception of a couple of them over here that are kind of at, at that angle but anyway what we've got in mind doing is we're going to have a small dozer come up here and grade all this out. He said that he thought there was enough dirt that I could take out from here pushing it that way and out that way that would kind of level this area out. Um, I told him that I wanted to move the sawmill down here. I want to basically be able to come up and drive and have a nice uh, flat area kind of like what I was having up here uh, where the sawmill is at currently but what I want to do is I want to build not really a kiln but I want to have a building that I can actually store lumber and probably what I will do is go ahead and take that small wood stove that's in here and put it down there also that way I can um, heat it up from time to time and it will help to dry out the wood so um, what I've got envisioned is a 50 foot long building that's 16 feet in depth and um, that will house the sawmill and then it will give me several areas I kind of drew it out on paper several areas that I can actually stack lumber in which you know still using those little one inch um, sticks uh, to separate the lumber so it can actually breathe but I'll be able to stack you know eight foot if I want to or, or ten foot depending on however high I build the walls uh, but that will give me a lot of storage area in there and um, that will get the sawmill down here where it's a little bit more accessible and then we're going to take that building down there or up here and we're going to turn it into a wood shed so I'm going to take down the one that I uh, built up there by the kitchen and that will give me a little bit more area and then hopefully if I can ever move that little tiny house I'll build a one car garage but it gives me more room to work in right there um, and then uh, next to the sawmill we're actually going to build a workshop and probably what I'll do is I'll mill up kind of like timber framing but there'll be square logs um, and I'll kind of like do a button pass joint um, that'll be the easiest to do and th these now the sawmill and the kiln area well, I say kiln the storage area that'll be more like a lap sided type building but this one will be more like um, you know not necessarily the Lincoln logs because I'm not going to scribe joints I'm actually going to cut it in half and let them overlap each other but that will be uh, kind of following the same theme up here and then beside that kind of like a small um, barn type shed to park the tractor in and then have a um, an awning or a lean-to off to the side of that where I can park my bush hog and some of the other few pieces of equipment that I've got to kind of keep them out of the rain um, and then on this very end right here this will give me still a fairly large area the uh, hoodle culture mounds that I'm talking about putting in here uh, that will be a really nice place because this will be opened up somewhat so there will be a lot of sunshine there and then I'll have the raised beds and these hoodle culture uh, mounds down here and probably have enough area where I can make some potato beds and things like that so um, the root cellar I also mentioned that to him so he's going to try to dig out a hole for it I don't know when I'll get to it uh, because probably what I'm going to start working on first is the sawmill uh, getting it moved down here building that structure so that I can continue you know milling I mean I'll still mill until I get it built but uh, continue milling because I'll have to have material for that and for these other buildings down here so the sawmill is going to have to be going all the time but um, yeah that's the kind of the plans that I've got so let me 
walk you down here and I'll show you a little bit closer um, these different uh, buildings and structures that I was talking about. Okay, uh, you can see right behind me I've got a, an old wire reel right there that's actually got 250 feet of half inch stranded wire, um, which actually is what they use to guy power poles and things with. Um, that was the easiest way to keep that thing rolled up so that I could use it. But um, I, you know, just have to find places to store things. But anyway, um, this area right in here is where the sawmill is going to be. So I'll basically be able to drive straight down and run straight into it um, as it stands right now. So that's kind of the plan that we've got. And then the, uh, the lumber storage area will be a building built right onto the edge of that. So it'll kind of sit at an angle, uh, so to speak right behind where that big poplar tree is. Now there's probably a half a dozen uh, trees which is a mix of poplar and yellow pine that I'm going to have to uh, take out right here but most of the rest of it is just undergrowth. Um, this is the stuff that doesn't get to grow because the canopy overhead doesn't allow enough sunlight to hit the ground for those really to grow up uh, like the others. So uh, you know the poplar grows really quick and then once it grows up it kind of shades a whole lot of stuff So anyway, I'm going to use a lot of uh, probably poplar uh, in building that and um, the uh, Workshop and the barn I want to do that out of yellow pine But since the other is such a large building and that's mainly what I'm abundant in is poplar That's probably what I'm going to use for that building. I'll have to have several posts uh, set in there to build my floor on and so forth. So I will probably use uh, Pine for that because I think the pine lasts a lot longer, you know uh, Buried in the ground. I do have uh, Some cedar that I could probably locate too and do the same thing, but they'll have to be you know fairly good size but anyway um, the poplar uh, will be cut down and used for the buildings of lumber. Uh, so this whole area right in here, like I said, will be those two buildings and um, you know that will provide me uh, the ability to get the sawmill out of there, turn that into the woodshed and have a place to store all of my material. Just so that you have the right perspective, that wire reel that I was talking about a while ago, it's sitting probably uh, 20 feet away from me, right in front of my hand right here. So that will be kind of be the corner uh, right in here where there was a pile of logs that will be the corner of the sawmill. So not too far from it, right behind pretty much this stack of lumber and I've got some wood stacked up back, back there that I actually cut when I was clearing this property to build all these buildings. But there will be a building here that will be a workshop so that I can kind of move all of my tools down here um, not really sure how big we're going to make it yet, you know. That tiny home is a pretty good uh, size little building, you know. If I don't sell it, uh, I may move it down here and use a bunch of this slab wood and cover it on the outside so that it kind of uh, matches. But I would really like to build the kind of, uh, what I was talking about, the log uh, type building. So it will actually sit right in here. Um, I'm going to have to move both piles of logs I'm going to have to move this and probably there's two stacks of slab wood right here that he said would probably have to come out so I've got quite a bit to actually work and actually just moving stuff that I had stacked up here but that building will set right here and then adjacent to it like I said will be you know kind of like a small barn and a place that I can uh, park the tractor um, and the equipment. So let me uh, take you back here in the woods and kind of show you in this direction um, the layout. Okay, I'm right behind the pile of logs that I have been using a whole lot lately, um, which though what's left is primarily uh, poplar. I do have a few cedars left in there. The other pile that was over there that I was standing at a while ago, that's pretty much all poplar, um, but I'm probably about 50 feet 
from the little road that goes behind the sawmill up there and this is probably a 15, 15 10 15 degree angle uh, so when he takes out a lot of that dirt a lot of that will come in this direction and it will be used for fill here um, standing back here I'm actually looking at one two uh, three cedar trees that are going to have to come out too um, which will probably be the posts that I'm going to need uh, for that area over there so uh, they're fairly good size um, they're probably about like this and they're nice and straight so I may just go ahead and use those for uh, the post to support the 50 foot structure that I was talking about but um, I'll kind of swing the camera around here it may be a little difficult to see because of all the underbrush but I'll show you the area that we're going to be cleaning okay we're going to be going straight through there we're going to be cleaning up this area right in here right up here is the pile of logs right over here is the slab wood and the wood that I said that I had stacked up from clearing and directly over in this area here is where that wire reel was and then of course right back here is a very large white pine that we're going to be saving and then here's another large white pine that we're going to be saving so this will kind of be the back side so here's another perspective of the area that I was there's the pile of logs right there's the wire reel up here in the corner I don't know if you can see behind me there's that one stack of slab wood but then I've got it all stacked around the back side of the sawmill um, then I guess you can see that double white pine that'll stay I've got several over here I got uh, some yellow pine that'll actually come out some poplar the cedars but the rest of it is basically just undergrowth so we're gonna try to push dirt back close to those huge white pines that'll be the back side of this area so this will be quite a considerable uh, area that we have um, that will actually have uh, buildings, usable buildings on. And you know, we really wanted to start that base camp this coming year, but the way that everything is going in the country and basically around the world, um, we kind of felt like that we should, they got some those leather bones that you buy at the store and they like playing chase and playing tag with them but anyway um, we kind of felt like that it was um, it made better sense and it was more logical to uh, do the buildings that were more practical uh, which would be you know this continued use of the sawmill um, a workshop to be able to do everything from a place that I can store my tools because I'm running out of storage area. Um, you know, the woodshed because we burn wood up here. Um, to be able to, you know, park the tractor because of the expense that's involved with that and the equipment. And a place to dry the wood. So that way we would have uh, on hand wood that we would have all the time if we wanted to start a new project. The base camp, you know, we're still going to do that. It's a great idea. Um, but I don't think it's as practical uh, to do, uh, especially here in the near future, as these other buildings that we're talking about. Uh, the root cellar, that's something that's going to need to be done because whatever we uh, develop next year, of course we have those raised beds and these Google culture mounds and stuff like that, um, you know, I have to have a place to store them. So the other thing too is I've been stocking up on you know a few essential dry goods like uh, you know flour sugar uh, rice beans things like that so that um, 
you know, you have a good source of, uh, you know, food supply and stuff like that. So um, uh, that's really the direction that we're leaning. And um, I think that that's going to make a whole lot more sense than some of the things, the, the plans, the dreams that we had. Well, they're not gone, but like I said, we still want to stick with something that's um, more logical, more practical to do, at least uh, for next year. Uh, and then after that, you know, possibly, you know, we could start uh, that base camp down there. Because we want a place, you know, that we can hang out and invite people to come up and stuff like that. The, I know I did mention one time about a couple of camping spots, which that won't take a whole lot to do. So some of the scrap material, you know, we can take and throw that together. Um, that way, you know, if people want to come down and visit, you know, they have a place to hang out and uh, camp and be in the dry and so forth. So, you know, that's still something that we've got on our mind that, like I said, won't take too much time. But the base camp, um, the, what we're thinking about doing, that will take uh, quite a bit of uh, effort and time to build. So, um, but like I said, you know, we, we're wanting to stick, you know, lean more towards logic and, and practicality. And we think that that's probably the best thing to do here uh, in the near future. Well, guys, I thought I would take out a little bit of time and try to answer some questions here. Um, you know, we got quite a few responses um, about uh, the lights. Uh, that was my son's original idea uh, to do the lights like that, especially since I put that angle iron in there because they kind of go together. And I think that it uh, kind of makes the cabin uh, look a whole lot nicer and a lot more rugged, you know, which is basically the way that we built it anyway. So yeah, it uh, it is definitely going to be nice once I get all of those in there. Um, some guy had commented way back on a video that I had done and said, I can see future releases of Kubota implements incorporating several of your ideas. Um, that was Hillbilly Engineering. Um, I, not, maybe not at its best, but nonetheless, it was Hillbilly Engineering. But everything works, you know, together and it provides a really good counterbalance to what I've done and also a lot of the other modifications that I made to the tractor just makes it a lot more purposeful and um, don't know why they didn't think of those things but uh, anyway it it does a whole lot uh, of work around here I can tell you this if we hadn't had that small Kubota tractor really none of this would have been done up here I couldn't have even cut the logs and brought them up here to put them on the mill even if I had the mill so um, it is definitely uh, made the difference in what we've been able to do up here at the outpost. Um, did want to give a shout out to Dale. I'm not going to mention the last name. Uh, you know who I'm talking about. He says, I'm watching this video in the hospital because of lung cancer again. And I had surgery on the past Tuesday. Don't know I'll, when I'll be going back home yet. Hope to be home soon. Your place is looking great. Well, Dale, we certainly... Um, Thank you for tuning into the channel and supporting it. Um, we want to wish you um, our prayers, you know, for a not only recovery but a speedy recovery. And I'm sure that others, you know, would do the same. So you all keep Dale in your prayers, um, please, because of being in the hospital with lung cancer. Um, the uh, another person, and you know, I get this. I, I don't know, several hundred times um, have gotten this same question. Uh, but it says, why do you torch the boards? Uh, we do that because, um, and you know, I, I know that probably somebody new that has tuned in that probably hasn't watched any of the previous videos. But we do that to kind of seal um, the board because it does... Um, burn the outer cells of the wood on the outer layer but then the inner ones they kind of close up somewhat you know and it does help to seal that board from moisture uh, being able to penetrate into it and I like that look I don't like just the plain board look um, when we put the oil on it and everything after we burn it it just makes the wood 
it makes the character in the wood stand out. So that's the reason I burn it. You know, I could have left it and let it age like a lot of other people do, but then you end up with a buckskin looking um, structure, building, you know, that to me, you know, could have a little bit more character. So I got used to burning wood uh, several years ago, and I thought, you know, when I do this cabin, I think I'm going to do the same thing. And so pretty much I have done a lot of the buildings like that. Uh, maybe not complete like this outdoor kitchen here. I just burned it up just up above this because I knew it was going to get a lot of the weather. Um, the rest of it has been left, but, you know, it's aging and starting to look, you know, uh, somewhat close to where the area that's burnt, but the burnt area actually is where all the character is at. It brings it out in the wood, so. Um, but yeah, that's the reason that we burn the wood is so that it makes it somewhat uh, more waterproof and, you know, for the look that it gives too. Now I will tell you this, that uh, different woods burn differently. The poplar, when I burned it, it basically turns black, um, turns really dark. Uh, the pine, it just certain areas of it burn, the rest of it stays, you know, lighter. Uh, so that's the look that we were kind of after on the cabin. And that's the reason that I used all pine on the cabin, with the exception of the timbers, which is the main structure. They were made out of poplar because they were the larger trees in this area, and that's what I have in abundance, like I had mentioned earlier. So that um is what i chose to make the structure out of and you know from from what we understand a lot of the older homes in this appalachian area were made out of poplar too so i can tell you this and when poplar starts aging it gets very hard um but those beams and everything um the main structure of that cabin they were all burned and treated and uh, so hopefully they will be there for a long long time um some guy also wrote, uh, just to let you know, he said, I bought the knife you did a review on from Husk. Very good product indeed. Thanks for sharing that with us. Uh, Husk is actually wanting us to do another review for them. Uh, they're going to be running a special, so that's probably going to be something in the future. You know, we do a lot of cooking around here and uh, things of that nature. And, you know, we'll be processing meat. I've kind of got my thoughts centered around maybe a hog next year. So, you know, that'll come in handy. Uh, but cooking, you know, a knife, a good knife, is something that you always need. And uh, honestly, you know, for the price, I found it to be a very uh, uh, good buy. Um, it's a good quality knife. It's, it's heavy duty. And um, I think that it will last a long time if you keep it in good shape. So... You're welcome for that. You know, like I've said before, anytime we find a company that uh, offers us something, if we think that we can use it here um, and we use it and it does a good job, then we definitely don't mind sharing it with you guys because, you know, you may not never know about it otherwise. Just like myself, a lot of these companies that have written to us, I didn't even, you know, know that uh, either that item existed or uh, that that company had that item. Let's see, another guy said, just joined both of your channels a couple months ago, wondered how big your cabin is. The cabin is actually 26 by 39. Um, I tried to uh, figure, you know, the size of the beams that I was cutting, what kind of span that they would make, and try to keep everything, you know, all the dimensions the same. I actually made six squares that were 13 foot uh, by 12 foot, basically. You know, then, of course, you have the thickness of the material so once you get from the inside of one wall to the other side it's basically like I said it's 26 by 39 and um, it's just a little under a thousand square feet I think uh, but I'll tell you what it seems like there's a whole lot of room in there um, but uh, yeah that's the size of it so um, if you're watching uh, there's your answer you know, God has been good he has given us a lot of good weather this past year and it allowed me to get a whole lot done and you know with the exception of some of the paint in the kitchen um, and up overhead on the front of the cabin uh, I have yet to do and then work on putting the trim up um, but you know that's something I do on those cold and rainy days that you know I don't want to get outside <clears throat> the other thing too is 
you know, my kids, they pretty much talked me into going to the store and buying the lumber that I'm going to put across the cracks where the sheetrock meets um, instead of using that slab wood. Not only is it a whole lot lighter, but it's a whole lot easier and quicker to work with. The If you've never worked with that type of uh, material before, you don't really have a starting point since it's not dimensional, it doesn't have a flat side. You can't just slide it up on the chop saw, get your angle ready and cut because you don't have any reference. Uh, so what I would end up having to do, or the table saw for that matter, what I would have to do is basically strike a line down what uh, you would think would be the center of the board which could be you know a little bit less on this side and then it may you know, swap as it goes down because it's curvy right um, but yeah I could have done it my way it would have taken a lot more time because I would have to strike the line then on each end I would have to use the square to make a 90 degrees so that I could not only you know cut the end of the board off to measure by but also to determine where I'm going to cut my angles and stuff and you know with a bad shoulder it'll be a whole lot easier but it's going to still look really good when I get it done and get it burned and get it oiled up because what I did is when I they didn't have the lumber that I was looking for um, I wanted 14 footers because it's a little over six foot on each section so 12 foot wouldn't work um, you know eight foot would have been just way too much waste so I was looking for 14 footers and all they had was two by sixes but I thought you know I could put that on the sawmill cut it in half and pretty much end up with a three quarter you know almost an inch board and I used the the, the inside of it where the sawmill blade went through it so it kind of made it rough and so when I burned it it kind of looks like you know some of the rest of the cabin so I think it's really going to look good when I get it done and it is super lightweight so I'll be able to handle that a lot easier and put it up you know myself and since it's basically got a flat edge I can slide it up either on the table saw or the miter saw when I go get ready to cut just make things a whole lot easier so uh, the kids you know they talked me into doing that so that I didn't have to lift some of that slab wood because it some of it's very heavy um, still think it would look great but this idea is going to look good too, uh, save me a lot of work and make it a lot easier on me since I do most of this work up here by myself. Well guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Thank you so much for all of your comments. Thank you for all of your support on both of our channels. My son, my daughter Jennifer and I, we can't thank you enough for the support that you guys have given us with sharing our channel you know with your family friends and neighbors and you guys tuning in all the time and you know that's the big reason and the big drive behind the giveaways that we do on a monthly basis because you know we want uh, you guys to be a part of the growth of the channel and that is our way of saying thank you back to you but guys like I said we can't thank you enough that's the reason that we do those giveaways also if you're new to this channel be sure to go to our website, SmokyMountainOutpost.com, and check that out because we have a new tier system. We're not but just a few hundred away from giving away two MS-180 steel chainsaws plus our regular monthly giveaways. But we've set up a new tier system uh, because we want to reward you know you guys, like I said, because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have a channel. So um, be sure and go check that out. You can find all the details on our on uh, the website. Um, also at the end of the channel, or <laughs> also at the end of the video, if you want to watch more of the outpost review, you can click the bottom left-hand corner. If you want to watch more of the outpost channel, you can click the top left-hand corner. But anyway, guys, we hope that each and every one of you have a great day. Everyone take care, and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time. Mm -hmm.